वेलकम टू राव राम पिल्ला शो बॉलीवुड टू हॉलीवुड वी हैव हेड अबाउट सेंट पैट्रिक्स डे लेबर डे फादर्स डे मदर्स डे बट हैव यू एवर थाट ऑफ हैविंग ए डे फॉर द इमिग्रेंट्स वेल माई नेम इज राव राम पिल्ला I am an actor and I am the host and I have lived in this country for the last 25 years but I come to know that the New York City has immigrant heritage week well it sounds like a, an immigrant day to me as part of these events they have uh several shows and one among them is the Romeo and Juliet in the Lower East Side of the Manhattan at Milagros Theater. Well, you know Shakespeare wrote famously Romeo, Romeo Juliet and we did the West Side story. But is there a East Side story to it? Well, what if there is a Chinese Romeo and the hispanic julieta well here we have jose esqui who is directing the romeo juliet in the lower east side and he's going to enlighten us what he thinks about this lower east side romeo juliet hey jose hi Ra, how are you welcome to the show thank you thank you pleasure to be here well um you know we always talk about this uh, classics and you mentioned about the west side story so what's your perception of this east side story of romeo and juliet well um initially when um we have been doing presentations of classical theater at teatro la tea for the last 4 years uh we've done productions of hamlet othello macbeth and most recently romeo and juliet it was uh my decision to try to merge the the most interesting and contemporary components of west side story mm -hmm. with the classical story of romeo and juliet um partially the you know our setting in our theater is in the lower east side and originally when the concept for uh the west side story was being sort of put together um in the early 50s or so the original story was going to be set in the lower east side it was going to be a a sort of uh set on in the conflict and tension uh between the then irish and uh and jewish sort of settlement in that area and uh by the time the story sort of came into production that particular tension had pretty much dissipated from the area so the producers decided to take the story from the lower east side and move it to the upper west side where there was now at the time growing tension between the latino population at the time mostly puerto rican and the irish population at the time um So was, why bring it back now? Bring it back now. Well, I I didn't, you know, because I was going because we are located in the Lower East Side first of all. And secondly because um there's two interesting sort of uh um Div diverse cultures there that mm -hmm. that kind of sort of populate the area being the latino culture and the asian culture i thought it would be interesting to sort of take these two these two cultures uh that are sort of neighbors to each other and and fuse them on stage with with about the oldest and greatest romance story that we know um i thought that it would bring about an interesting tension um and at the same time i thought that it would ultimately demonstrate that that one of the things that makes New York a very unique place is the fact that that all immigrants share a common thread in the story and that eventually we are aside from having our or rather along with having our cultural identity we also are very much New Yorkers and very much American and that was that is uh the most powerful element of all the presentations that we've done which is that um regardless of how multinational the cast is the stories hold up because we are able to relate to the human element of who we are and in our settings we're able to to access them easily because we put them in places that are very familiar to who we are as an American audience which is usually a challenge when you're presenting classical theater uh because for the most part you're dealing with a, a language that no one speaks anymore including the folks in in London England themselves in a time in a setting that most of us aren't familiar with um so that was the idea behind doing the presentation as we did do you think there is a, a tension between the chinese and the hispanics uh, 
across the Canal Street? I, you know, I, I don't know how I would define uh, tension necessarily between Chinese and Spanish. I think that 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 when people are different, there there's the easiest thing to navigate toward is the differences because you want to cluster. Uh, and sort of defend what you think is yours. Um, I think that at the heart of it, and, and as a product of, of many relationships that I know, people eventually, one, learn to live among one another, and two, eventually overcome and respect their differences. But I am sure that there are moments where, where people feel a, a particular threat or a certain sense of, you know, this is ours and we don't want people to take them over, or, you know, we don't want you to take over. And I'm sure that the tension is there, just like it is, you know, there's tensions among blacks and whites and among Indians and Pakistanis, you know. Yet, at the same time, somehow, the interesting thing about the United States is that while we have that particular tension, we also live in a country and an environment that ultimately says to us, those tensions have to be put aside and you have to still be able to function, which is uh, sort of the really, um, which is not sort of rather, but is, is the most powerful thing about the Immigrant Heritage Week Festival. Um, this is as far as I, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm going to ask you yeah. next. Uh, uh, why now in the Immigrant Heritage Week bring this one now? Well, uh, it, uh, Annie Lazar from, from Mayor Bloomberg's office uh, heard about the project through Jan Havoc, who is the, the uh, director of the Clemente Sotoveles uh, Educational and Cultural Center, uh -huh. which is where Teatro La Tea, the founding organization of the, of the Cultural Center, is housed. He saw the production along with community, uh, community board three members, mm -hmm. and they were very impressed by the fact that here you had, again, a cast that was as multinational as the neighborhood is, presenting this sort of tell us all this time and doing so excellently well. Uh, I mean, the, the production won several awards um, in acting and in both directing categories, um, which was, uh, and along with that, it, we did really well as far as presentations and audiences. Our audiences were as broad and as diverse as, as the cast themselves. And um, my sense was that we, in their sense was that we exemplified what is the best of the immigrant experience in New York, which is that regardless of all the backgrounds that we come from, uh, once we, we, most of us come here with the goal of bettering our lives and the lives of our families and, and pursuing dreams of our own. And, and a multinational cast in a, in a Lower East Side setting, taking a classical piece and doing all of those things, and on top of that, executing rather well, is the best example of what we can do as a city and what we can accomplish if we do so. What interests me is, uh, <clears throat> you know, Chinese represent 1.3 billion. Mm -hmm. You know, India represents uh, 1 billion. Absolutely. Uh, so when they did the West Side Story, mm -hmm. uh, it was even the Puerto Rican mm -hmm. and Irish, it's, it's still the West versus West. Mm -hmm. uh, but here is a, a new combination of uh, uh, East and the West, mm -hmm. East meets the West. Yeah. Hispanics are a little bit Western. Yeah. So uh, it, it kind of uh, interests me, you know, suppose if it were an Indian Juliet or, 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 or Indian Romeo and uh, maybe Chinese, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, a different. Uh, well, I, I, uh, you know, the story lends itself and in, in the, the, the sort of the, uh, the, uh, the appetizing thing for directors and and producers, because Shakespeare's work is public domain, is the ability that these grand settings and, and sort of the truth of being human lends itself to being able to place it in just about any kind of a situation. Like, for example, I know that there is a, there's a production that's going up in Brooklyn where the story is being said in the middle of the Israeli conflict, where one family is Israeli and the other family is Palestinian. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I'm sure that you could set it, you know, Indian and, and Russian. As a matter of fact, even in our story, you know, Paris's family, we sort of set it as Russian Jews mm -hmm. because they're one of those sort of original settling groups of the Lower East Side. So, so that tension, or rather the truth of, of unrequited love and two families that might not like each other, can be pretty much said anywhere, and it will work. Well, there may be still some prejudice, even though we have Obama as a president, mm -hmm. but still there is a prejudice against African Americans. Yeah, that absolutely. doesn't go away, but so there may be some amount of prejudice against the Chinese too, because the way they immigrated, building the railroads mm -hmm. way back in the history of this country, uh, perhaps uh, Hispanics are a little more privileged. They don't have to build the railroads to come into this country. Uh, so, so it it it, it has uh, an element which West Side Story doesn't have. 
Um, well, I, it, it's uh, it's an interesting thing because uh, the the reality of West Side Story is that um, West Side Story took the immigrant element and um, and and but set it among poor immigrants. Actually, um, in West Side Story, the immigrants are working class. Um, in our story, we actually did the reverse. The, we, we sort of set up these families to be wealthy, sort of well-established families in the neighborhood, which I think is a very differing uh, dynamic to add. Mm -hmm. Because uh, West Side Story, as a story, makes the assumption that if you're going to sort of show immigrants, they have to be of a lower caste. And we're saying that, you know, they're immigrant folks that are just about in every sort of social strata of our country. Um, and that's where we chose to show it. Um, that there is prejudice is sort of an inevitable thing. You know, prejudice is, is, uh, is, is a conceptual idea that, that allows to a degree for survival when we don't know something. You know, obviously, if you're walking down the forest and you see a snake, there's something that informs you, hey, don't cross that, na that snake, it might bite you. Now, it might be a garden snake, but that little thing keeps you alive. It is our ability to go beyond that um, that sort of makes us ultimately human and hopefully better. Uh, you know, our ability to say, okay, well, he might be Indian, and I don't know if I would put him in Shakespeare, but you know what? He brings something fascinating to the character that he's portraying. So why don't I, rather than say to myself, oh, well, you know, this is a classical piece, and this guy's got an Indian accent, I don't know if he should be there. Why don't I instead take the chance, and rather than honoring that prejudice, why don't I try to go beyond it and say to myself, well, as an actor, he brings something fascinating to this character. So well, let's bring him in and then see what happens. And, and I think ultimately that that is the, uh, the failed lesson that doesn't happen in the story of Rome, Romeo and Juliet. No one is willing to look beyond their prejudice, and that's why these young people sort of fall fatally. Uh, however, the hope is that in, up, up, upon seeing the story, maybe we will do a little bit better. Um, and, and that's sort of my hope and, and I think the hope of the cast, that people look beyond all those things that are already there, even though they are and they're present and we don't deny their existence. But you did this uh, before, right? This was done last year. Yes, it was presented uh, May of last year. And the city picked up uh, this time. Yeah, and the city, uh, we were among, uh, there are 120 different uh, presentations going on during Immigrant Heritage Week. There's theater, there's lectures, um, it, they will be on Facebook so that they could be followed on there. So anyone can go to countless, of, uh, countless numbers of events and just become aware of, of what immigrants contribute to our city day to day. And the greatest thing about it is that all the events are free. Um, so, you know, the, it, you can bring your kids. Most of the events are age appropriate. Um, so it, it allows for all of that to happen. You know? So they can come and see the show for free? Absolutely. The, the presentation will be, we will have one show on April 16th at 8 p.m. and another show on April 18th at 6.30 p.m. at the Clemente Sotovelas Cultural Center, 107 Suffolk Street in the Milagro Theater. Um, what you're looking at now is, uh, is a slide of uh, the character playing Romeo, Chester Poon, yeah. and Adelina mm -hmm. uh, playing Benvolio, and she's going to kill me for forgetting her name. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, they look beautiful. Uh, another thing that we did and that I've done often in the productions is take roles that are uh, oh, usually yeah. played by male actors and have female actors in the role. Yeah, that's the nurse, I think. That was uh, Carissa Soto. Right. And, and then uh, these two people dancing. Uh, actually, that was one of the fight scenes between oh, Tybalt and Benvolio oh. at the opening of the, of the show. And uh, another one of the things that we did was that we kind of added elements of contemporary dance. So there's uh, Mercutio and Romeo preparing to walk into the ball, and they actually break dance. Oh. Uh, Mateo Gomez played uh, Capulet. He's a very well respected yeah, actor. Yeah, he's the today. founder of the theater, actually. And the founder of the theater. Um, and we brought in elements of Latin dance as well. Oh. And as you can see, the cast is pretty diverse during the masquerade ball. Yeah, she's an account. The Julieta is an accomplished dancer, right? Yeah. Yeah, and they're all, you know, they, all of these folks are, for the most part, like yourself, uh, working New York actors. Oh, there I was. Yeah, there you go in the back, <laughs> working it out with your little cummerbund. Uh -huh. um, all these folks are working New York actors who you, oh, at any given point, will see on, you know, Law and & Order or on independent films around the city or in theaters. Uh, just young people that need support and, and mature folks that need our support. And who is that lady? Oh, she, she went away. Uh, there are elements where we sort of froze the action on stage to mimic um, some of the design of West Side Story. Uh -huh. 
Oh, that's the choreography the, was done by... What uh, kind of dance is that? That's a little bit of breakdance done by uh, Dina Clemente and Wandi Candelario, oh, who are two renowned hip-hop artists. Breakdance is Shakespeare, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? Why not? And there's a kiss between Romeo and Juliet that oh. sort of throws the action. Again, the photography was done by Anthony Ruiz. Uh -huh. uh, David Elia, who is a, <laughs> who is a very, well, I don't know if he'd consider himself old <laughs> as much as mature. That's David, I know him. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's uh, the famous fight scene between uh, Tybalt and Mercutio. Uh -huh. and, uh, wow, they're going to be able to kill each other. Yeah. There you go, a very dramatic stage lighting design by Alex Moore. Mm -hmm. Our uh, set design was done by Yanko Bakula, so oh, you can see Chester Poon and... There you go, Romeo again. Yeah, Romeo, uh, you know, all of the guys worked very hard to make sure that they, uh, they look sort of as, as realistically involved in the oh, action somebody as Somebody is dead. Ah, uh, yeah, the scene is the death of Tybalt. Uh, they Maybe have this, uh, Amy Lugo uh, playing uh, Aeschylus. Oh. This is the scene where the families get together. There's the body of Tybalt and uh, Ben Rhea Abbott playing the nurse. Who played that nurse? Uh, ben Rhea Abbott. Oh, Ben Rhea Abbott. Yeah, also a local New York actor. Um, some of the actors for this particular presentation, uh, some of the roles will be played by a few different actors. Uh, mm -hmm. It's Kevin uh, Scheinerman also. He actually played Paris, who was played as a Russian Jew. Um, the other thing that was very interesting about the presentation as well was the, um, the use of the native languages throughout oh. the piece. So yeah, Matea uses a lot of the uh, Yeah, so there was a lot Spanish. of, there were sprinkles of Spanish, of Chinese, and of Russian uh, mm -hmm. in the piece, all along with the classical English presentation. There's uh, the famous scene at the church with the fire where Juliet threatens to kill herself. Oh. And when she's offered the potion. Um, he looks wonderful with the potion. Yeah. There's oh, obviously. she's dead. Yep, there she is. This was a very powerful scene where you actually added a very powerful element from your culture oh, thank uh, you. during the morning, which uh, completely uh, sort of brought everybody into focus as to what was going on. Uh, this is uh, right around the moment where Romeo and the apothecary scene happens. This is when he's given the poison. Oh. There's Sarah Evans. Now, again, to show you the diversity of the cast, Sarah is from Mississippi, uh -huh. um, and she's sort of a transplanted uh, New Yorker now. and. Uh, there is the, the scene at the gravesite. Thank you. Well, thank you. Pleasure being here. Our next two guests are Chester Poon, played Romeo, and Tiffany Rothman, played Romeo's mother, Lady Montague. Chester, uh, you have been an actor, right? Yes. So yeah. when this offer came from Jose, uh, did you jump on it or did you oh. hesitate? Oh yeah, I mean, well we've actually been, we discussed it a little bit kind of in passing a year prior mm -hmm. or even two years prior to the production of it. I didn't think too much of it, but then he came back to me a year later saying, hey, we're doing Romeo and Juliet again. I mean, not again, but we're doing Romeo and Juliet, do you want to do it? And I jumped on it. Um, I wouldn't say it's often that Asian men get to play a romantic lead, so yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm very incredible. happy for you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I wish I did the Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> next, time, next time, there's always another time. Yeah. But you're an accomplished Shakespearean actor, right? Um, I, I, no, you did a lot of Shakespeare. Plays. Yeah, I've done. Uh, I did all four years of the project with uh, Jose mm -hmm. at Teatro La Latea mm -hmm. when they did Hamlet. It was kind of like a, almost like an in-house schooling program for me, on-the-job schooling. Um, I How did you get into acting? Well, let's see. I guess uh, I started taking classes at HB Studios. Um, oh, that's, uh, that's a good school. You know, I caught the bug in college. Mm -hmm. And so I was just kind of looking for stuff around the city. And I met Jose, because I'm a personal trainer mm -hmm. as well. I met Jose at the gym mm -hmm. that I was working at. And he heard through a friend you know, a mutual friend that, you know, I was trying, I was an actor. So he approached me asking if I wanted to play Player King in Hamlet. I was hesitant at first because I'd never done Shakespeare before, and it made me nervous because I didn't know how to speak the language, when in reality it's just English. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. Common, common English. But it was, it was scary, but I, I did But you did, it. finally you did it. Yeah, I did it, yeah. and slowly over the years, we did Othello and then Macbeth and then Romeo. Was it difficult Romeo to memorize yeah. such a big role or? 
No, actually it isn't. Oh. I think Shakespeare, okay. Shakespeare, the way he writes, everything he writes flows really well together. Mm -hmm. That it's, it's natural that, oh, it's natural that this line follows that line, and so on and so forth. It's almost easier for me to memorize Shakespeare than it is contemporary modern English. How do you feel about that? Doing Shakespeare. You're from Vietnam, right? Yes, yes. And you are a trained ac actor? Well, I'm, I'm fairly new in this industry, but about Shakespeare, yes, I, I love it. I love it. It's, it was difficult from the beginning, learning the line and all that stuff, but then you get used to it. It's, it flow well, like Chester say. And it's, uh, it's I like your dress. So are, are you a communist? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You're from Vietnam, right? Yeah. Do people wear red dresses in Vietnam? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a suit. Uh, but how, how are Vietnamese uh, uh, getting into a, a Shakespeare and uh, tradition? Hmm. Well, last time I heard that they do translate it into Vietnamese. Oh. And they do it all over the, the north. H how do both of you feel? You're playing his mother. Yes. And uh, he's your son. Yes. So uh, how do each of you feel uh, in these roles? I love the role because Lady Montagu, she's very possessive of her son. That's the only love she has in this character. She's a widow, which made her single, rich, and very hot. Are you rich? <laughs> well, you the look hot to me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> the how, how do you feel uh, being her son? Well, um, I guess character-wise, how any teenager or young adult would feel about their parents in general. Just do you go stay around away kind of, from them, kind of, you know? <laughs> do you go around Canal Street, pick up some chicks? Well, I guess that's what Romeo would do instead, <laughs> hanging out with mom. Um, but we actually, the interesting thing, we don't actually share a scene at all in the entire play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just um, interesting. Other than the time when I'm dead. Right, until the end. That's when yeah. she came out, she saw him, and she started falling to pieces. But Say that like that's it. I give up. <laughs> no more hatred. <laughs> but I guess character-wise, it, I, I, you know how most kids are at this age. Don't really want to see their parents. I remember it. I remember the, those days very well. <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad to have both of you on my Thank show. You. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Dion Davis. Dion. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming here. You played uh, uh, Friar John, right? Yes, I do. How do you get into that role? Well, I heard about the role itself through a mutual friend of the director's. Uh -huh. um, we, they, had tried me out, they had tried me out for the role, and, the, and Jose had approached me and said, would you like to play the role of Friar John? And you did. Yeah, and oddly enough, it, this, was my first act, this was my first acting gig. But you are a magician, right? A uh, musician, yes. Yeah, so I'm, music and the acting, they go hand in hand. Uh, yeah, as, and as I think, as, actually, actually I think they do, because right now I'm, where, cur I'm currently studying music. Uh, where, are you, where are you from? Originally, I am from New Jersey. I have, I've, was born in this country, but um, my grandfather is a uh, first generation American. His, his father was from Jamaica, and his mother is from Honduras. I heard that uh, you can memorize and remember things for a long, the whole Shakespeare. If you hear it, you can memorize it. Yeah, that comes from where I'm actually a, a big fan of Shakespeare's plays, uh, his tragedies, comedies, the histories, sonnets, and sometimes during the play, I, um, I'll hear the line so much I'll end up knowing I'll, I'll end up knowing the line by heart. And I actually have Romeo and Juliet, a copy of the play itself at home. So in spare times, in spare time, whenever I have time, sometimes I'll read one of Shakespeare's plays. So I'll read Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Othello, The Tempest. So what's your take on uh, this character? Well, Friar John, he is a Franciscan friar. So his duties are to the church. Are you religious? Um, I. I guess religious wouldn't be a good word. Spiritual would be a better word for me. Oh, okay. Um, where he he does he he ha does see the community as as sort of like a ho a home for him. And the first time, and he's getting to he gets to know Romeo and Juliet. And the first scene I have is the first scene I have with the with the two characters 
is during the wedding, is during the uh, secret wedding. So how did you like the whole play? I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the play immensely. Did it, you hate any actors? Oh no, we, <laughs> <laughs> we, got, a, we got along got along very good. well. So you made some lifetime friendships? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually look forward to doing something like this again. I oh, hope that's to, um, great. I hope, to I hope to come back for, um, for future performances at Teatro La Tea. Yeah, surely Jose would put you on and, uh, and, uh, and New York City would be interested to watch you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, well, thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having and me. And thanks for being my fellow actor at the <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. You have a wonderful sweater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Christmas present from my uncle. Yeah, I was going to say Santa yeah. Claus, but... Uh, well, now we heard from the cast and the director, and this is a wonderful piece. And New York City, you all have to come and watch this show. After all, what is New York? without diversity, and that's why we have this Immigrant Heritage Week. Until next time, Salam, and see you all.